Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Lower Secondary Sample Test for September 2020, Science Stage 9 Paper 1. Let's start. Question 1. The diagram shows a human excretory system. A. 1. Name the organ labeled A. That's simply the kidneys. Part 2. Name the waste product that organ A removes from the body. That just uvea or urine. These two are just direct questions, that's why there's no big explanation. B. Scientists use models to explain how things work. The diagram shows apparatus and materials used to model the excretory system. The rice grains, lentils, and sugar are added to a beaker of water and stirred. The mixture is poured through the sieve. 1. Draw a line from each material or piece of apparatus to the part of human excretory system it represents. So the kidneys filter out the waste products from the blood cells or the blood and that's simply the sieve right because the sieve filters out the waste product sugar from these so the blood cells are the ones which are not passing through the kidneys right they're not passing through the excretory system so the kidneys only let certain molecules pass through to be excreted through the bladder right and that's why the lentils and rice grains are the blood cells which do not pass through the kidney and the sugar is the waste product which does pass through the kidneys. And in this case, the sugar passes through the sieve. These don't pass through the sieve. Part 2. Describe how this model shows the function of the human excretory system. So this is just a description. The kidney acts as a sieve to remove the sugar, which is the waste product, from the lentils and rice grains. And the larger particles are kept on the sieve, which are lentils and rice grains, or in other words, blood cells while the smaller ones are passed out, not just out of the sieve, but out of the body in case of the actual excretory system. The sugar is passed out as the waste product. That's the answer. So the keywords here are using the kidney acts as a sieve to remove the waste product sugar. We need to say that it removes the sugar and then from the lentils and rice grains, which are the blood cells, we need to mention what part each of these represent. And then we need to mention this. Why are these particles kept and these passed out? Because the larger particles are kept on the sieve. They can't pass through because they're too big to pass through the holes. And the smaller ones are passed out. So we need to just describe the model and then explain why it works. That's the answer. Question two, look at the diagram of part of the periodic table of elements. A. Use the periodic table to write the electronic structure of aluminium Al. If you remember, the atomic number of aluminium is 13. Even if you don't remember, you can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 aluminium. And in the first electron shell, you can only have 2 electrons. In the second electron shell, maximum is 8. If you add them up, it's still not 13, it's 10. So you have to add three more in the third electron shell to make it 13. So the answer is 283, and that is what I've written. B, how many protons are in an atom of fluorine, F? So let's count to see which atomic number it has, or if you remember it, you could already say it's nine, but then if you don't, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fluorine. So that's the ninth one. Also, just as a reminder, stage 9 expects you to memorize the first 20 elements, atomic numbers, mass numbers, and way they form ions, or in other words, which group they are in, especially for the first group, the second last, and the last group, which are the alkali metals, the halogens, and the noble gases. These are the ones expected to be memorized and the first 20 elements you have to memorize the atomic number and mass number. Now for part C, a sodium atom Na forms a sodium ion Na+. Describe in terms of electrons how a sodium ion is made from a sodium atom. This is actually kind of simple. The sodium atom loses an electron to form a sodium ion because it has only one electron in its outermost shell. That's why it does it. And that will be our answer. Now you can go to question three. Look at the symbols used in electrical circuits. A. Which one shows an ammeter? Choose from A, B, C, or D. The answer is simply A. Ammeter is a circle which has an A on it and it connects to two sides of 
the wire, electrical wire. B, what is the name of the component shown by symbol C? This component. If we had just a rectangle, we know that this is a resistor. But then since there's an arrow drawn in it, now we have to add variable to this because in a normal fixed resistor, there's only one resistance provided. For example, let's just say it's one ohm. By the way, this symbol is the symbol for resistance units, ohms. But then in a variable resistor, there could be a range of values which you can change. For example, let's say the range is 1 to 10 ohms. That means you can set the resistor to supply a resistance of from 1 to 10 ohms, any particular value, according to the caliber of the resistor. That's why it's called variable, because you can change the amount of resistance provided. See, Mia wants to measure the voltage across a lamp. Complete the circuit diagram to show how Mia connects a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the lamp. The symbol for a voltmeter is shown as V. Even though ammeters are connected in series with the circuit, voltmeters have to be connected in parallel. And in this case, we need to find how much voltage is across the lamp. So we have to place a voltmeter in parallel to the lamp. So there's two wires stretching out from where the lamp is, one just before and one just after the lamp, and then a voltmeter connected right there. And that will be the answer. Question four, plants need magnesium and nitrates for healthy growth. A, one, what substance do plants make using magnesium? The answer is simply chlorophyll. Part two, what type of substance do plants make using nitrates? The answer is proteins. You can also write amino acids or peptides. These are technically higher level vocabulary expected for IGCSE, but then proteins is enough to get the full mark here in stage nine. B, the diagram shows plant A and plant B. Plant A has green leaves and plant B has green and yellow leaves. The plants are both the same size and belong to the same species. One, both plants receive the same amount of light and water. After one week, plant A is bigger than plant B. Explain why. First thing before I say my answer, I've actually left one word which is needed to complete the answer. So try to find that one word and where you have to place that word. I won't be telling until some time. I'll give you time to think. So first of all, this is a sample answer. Plant A has green leaves containing a high amount of chlorophyll, therefore it can photosynthesize more and grow faster. I've missed one word in this and I invite you to pause the video and try to find where that one word should be. You might need to read the question carefully for this. Okay, so the answer is you need to just write a more inside here. Why? You might be saying, what, this this doesn't even make sense, like, it's just more green leaves, but like, you can just say green leaves, right, that's not really an issue. It is an issue, because it says in the question that plant A has green leaves only, and plant B has green and yellow leaves, which are both green and yellow, and they both are the same size and belong to the same species, meaning they have the same number of leaves in total. Otherwise, of course, it wouldn't be a fair test. And plant A has only green leaves. Plant B has some yellow as well, so there'll be less number of green. So we just say plant A has green leaves. That's not enough because plant B also has. So why does plant A grow more? That could be a question. You will lose one mark for that. So this word more is actually having a huge importance in this question. And of course, you need to mention photosynthesis as well. So plant A has more green leaves containing high amounts of chlorophyll because yellow leaves, of course, don't contain chlorophyll. And then therefore it can photosynthesize more and grow faster. This is a good answer. There's a few other ways to write it. For example, you could say plant B has less green leaves, so it photosynthesizes less. And using like a reverse argument or counter example to do it. But that's also correct. Now you can go to part two. Plants remove carbon dioxide from the air and replace it with another gas. What's the name of this gas? Of course, it's oxygen. Photosynthesis 
is carbon dioxide plus water taking in and then using the sunlight to create glucose plus oxygen. And oxygen is the gas given out. See, a farmer grows cabbage plants in his field. There are spaces between each cabbage plant. So just one reason why it's important to have spaces between each cabbage plant. The answer is simply it allows each plant to have less competition for minerals, water, and sunlight. This actually might seem a bit obvious, but then if you don't write something like competition, you probably won't get the mark. If you say that each plant can get its own amount of minerals, water, and sunlight, that's a vague answer. And that's why you have much less chance of getting the one mark for that. So that's why you have to write the word competition is very important. And of course, you can mention these or without mentioning as well, but then this is the keyword which gives the one mark. You can also say that it has more space to grow, but then that's not the best answer, even though it does give the one mark. Now you can go to question five. Look at the table. It shows information about some properties of group one elements. So these are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium. And the melting points, boiling points, density in grams per centimeter cube, and atomic radius are given. A. Describe the trend in boiling point as you go down group 1. So as you go down group 1, the boiling point decreases. Why? Because we can see the boiling points. Lithium has 1,342 degrees. Suddenly, when you go to sodium, it's 883 degrees. That's nearly 500 degree difference. And then next is potassium, 759 degrees. That's about 130 approximately difference. Rubidium, 688. That's approximately 100 degree difference. And it'll go on like that for the rest of the group one elements. So we can clearly see that it's decreasing as you go down. And that's the answer. Part B, which property does not show a clear trend? Only answers density, because we can see that the melting point, the boiling point, and the atomic radius have clear trends. These two decrease as we go down the group, and this one increases as we go down the group. But for density, we can see that it first starts increasing here, then it decreases slightly, and then it increases like that. So it does not show a clear trend. You might say, yes, it's increasing, and that is true, but then this two values create the confusion because this decrease makes it not a clear trend. So part C, predict the melting point of rubidium. This 40 value was not given in the table before, by the way. So, well, the melting point of rubidium, we have to predict it. And we can see the trend in the melting point. It goes from 180 all the way down to 98. And this difference is an 82 degree difference. But over here, it's only a 35 degree difference. And we can see that the difference itself is decreasing, not just the melting point. So the rate of change is decreasing. And as we go here, we can expect it to be like a 15 to 30 degrees change because it should be less than this change. And I've written 40 degrees because the change will be 23 degrees, which is quite less compared to 35. And then the melting point, just 40 degrees, is a simple answer. If you write any number from 25 to 50 degrees, it's correct. So it's fine if you did anything else as well, but then it has to be inside that range. Part D. Describe the change in reactivity of the elements as we go down group 1. So as we go down group 1, the reactivity simply increases. This is a property because as we go down the group, the number of electron shells increase. So let's say there's the nucleus, and then we have one electron shell, but then that's not a group 1 element. So we get two electron shells. So if we have one, two, three electrons, we'll have lithium, and then the outermost electron is very close to the nucleus compared to if we had two more electron shells, for example, potassium, all these shells would be full. There would be eight here, and then there would be another eight here. I'm just marking them with lines so I can go faster. And then there'll be one here. So this one's much further from the nucleus which means the electron can be lost easily to form an ion. So as we go down the group, the size increases and therefore the electromagnetic strength of attraction decreases between the electrons and the nucleus. So the reactivity increases. That's the answer.